I have a problem. Just to add context to this, this is touching the floor. Okay? It's a Jenga tower of PlayStation 4 games. That's touching the floor, and it's reaching all the way up to where I'm at within camera uh, view. And it's here. And it's wobbling back and forth. I'm trying my best to keep it steady as I humanly can. And if you couldn't already tell from this monster size of a tower that's just <laughs> leaning back and forth, it's making me incredibly anxious and nervous. This is going to be my closing out video for 2017. I was kind of going back and forth between different ideas, different thoughts, and creative inputs as to what it's going to be my last video for 2017. Fuck it, let's just make it a collection video. And so, I feel like it's a good thing to do one on one of the current consoles that's actually going on right now. And one that is part of a lineage that I've been doing all throughout this year. I did the PS2 collection video, I did the PS3 collection video, and now it's time for the PlayStation 4. Now considering that the PlayStation 4 is still an ongoing console, just like the Xbox One, which hopefully within January or so I'll do an Xbox One collection video, they're ongoing consoles that are still happening right now and games are still being put out for them, at least within the next couple of years before PlayStation and Microsoft, wherever comes first, announces the next big thing. So for the time being, this is going to be a collection video that is still up and going and being updated uh, from time to time. And it's a rather big collection. In fact, I dare say I have more games for this system than I even did for the PS2 or the PS3. And I think that kind of shows where my jobs kind of kicked in and said, hey, look how much money you got now to spend on games. And holy shit, was that a mistake. So before we get again to the games, I just want to kind of showcase a little something here. Actually, within Reach, I managed to get the OG PS4 box right here with plenty of dust. So I'm not going to get near it, but I don't want to get it because you guys pretty much know what it already looks like. So I don't think there's any need for it, but I have the original PlayStation 4 console, so I don't have the one that you probably see in the stores right now that's rounded and it kind of looks like a toaster oven. I have the one that looks like a prism, which is this one right here, and I managed to get a bundle that came with a download code for one of four games. The four games were, you get to choose from either Destiny, 2K15, Far Cry 4, and Little Big Planet 3. I chose Far Cry 4, and I still haven't played it. Why? But what's also cool is is that right here, there's actually a sticker for Best Buy. So I'm like, okay, cool. Ever since then, I've been purchasing from Best Buy, and thankfully, they have not, have not let me down. And yeah, I just said, fuck it, and there's no order for these games. Some games are going to be super old, some are going to be brand new, like I bought two weeks ago, and they're in completely random, no alphabetical order. Ever so often, there's going to be one where it's like, okay, one after the sequel after the sequel and then there's going to be others that are kind of look alphabetized but honestly i just grabbed them from my shelf grabbed them from my boxes put them all together here and so let's get started and i'll try to be brief and quick about this because i know there's too many games here to even talk about first here at the top of the pile is assassin's creed unity uh hopefully i'll get to it very very soon because i'm completely done with the assassin's creed games on ps3 so hopefully unity is next and I have to figure out where I'm going to put the... Okay, I'll put them here, I guess. Next, again, I was talking about how some of these games were kind of put together uh, up on the shelf. Assassin's Creed Syndicate. And you can kind of still see the uh, pickup slip right there. Again, haven't gotten to it yet. But hopefully, very, very soon. Because I am kind of missing the Assassin's Creed games. I haven't played one in a while. So Unity and then Syndicate. And then maybe in the future, if I find a good deal for it, Origins. So next up, Bloodborne. Very scared to get into this game because I, I've heard from so many folks saying that they weren't huge fans of the Dark Souls games because they're designed to be really hard, trepidatious games to get into, but they really turned around with Bloodborne. Like, they jumped to the Bloodborne and they're like, yeah, I don't like dying over and over, but I love this game. And I'm like, okay, please, please, please do not lead me astray. So, looking forward to that. This I did play. And what a disappointment it was. Star Wars Battlefronts. Yes, I own it. I did not pay much for it, though. I, I can assure you that. I think I, I think it was only like $15, $20 because I knew how to work the system. Got my Gamers Club Unlocked discount from Best Buy along with a couple of certificates. And I managed to get this at a discounted price. And uh, it's a good little 
way to pass the time, but I don't remember digging any more than like a week into it. This game I'm very much looking forward to jumping into, uh, because I was really a huge fan of the... Not the one that came right before this, but probably a couple of games back, I was like, wow, this is the revelation. Dragon Age Inquisition. I heard it was getting a bunch of Game of the Year awards and plenty of good recognition, so I'm hoping that this is going to be an awful lot of fun to play, but I know that this being an RPG, I'm going to have to make an awful, awful lot of time for that one. Alright, so we're getting a couple of steelbooks here. Uh, first one is Batman Arkham uh, Knight. I almost said Origins for some reason. I'm probably still thinking about Assassin's Creed, but... Batman Arkham Knight, really dig this still book. I like the glossy finish and then the look of Batman there. Why is it creaking the way it is? Okay, anyways. But love this game. My favorite game of the year, to be honest. No matter the problems I did have with the repetition of the Batmobiles and certain things here and there, especially involving the storyline with the Arkham Knight himself, that could have been handled better. But still, I don't think people should hate on this game as much as it did, unless you play it on PC. Mm. Next, another steelbook, Dishonored 2, a very underrated sequel. Well, I mean, critics loved it, but I didn't hear the common folk talk about this game too, too much, and that's a little bit of a disappointment for me because this this franchise, I love this franchise, um, and I'm hoping that it continues in some respect, but I'm scared that poor sales is not going to keep it alive, but I'm hoping for the best. All right, let's see. Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. I gotta be honest, this is the game that I kind of prefer over Shadow War from this year because I think it just felt like a much more genuine experience and it was just a breath of fresh air to see different elements that we've seen from various other games being put into one little bundle here with uh, Shadow War. Or Shadow Mortal, I'm sorry. Mortal Kombat X. Glad to see that Netherrealm took the helm. Didn't mean to rhyme there, but they took over the Mortal Kombat franchise, kind of revamped it with Mortal Kombat 9, or just plain simply called Mortal Kombat on the last gen of consoles. And Mortal Kombat X just proceeded that further, gave us even grosser fatalities that people were like reacting to. And I think this is one of the games that's responsible for reactions, because so many people were reacting to those montages of all the deaths and all that stuff. And and that's what kind of started, or what was one of the things that was pioneering the craze. At least that's my personal theory, that this is one of the games, one of the things in pop culture responsible for reaction videos. Anyways. Okay, so, I never played a Metal Gear Solid game, but I'm hoping that this one kind of turns my mind around how I feel about the series, which is that it's just a little too weird, a little too crazy, and just... I, I don't know, words can't exactly explain what goes on in Kojima's head. But, I did, however, pick up, at a bargain, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. As you can see, it's still wrapped, haven't played it, but I'm looking forward to it. And what's kind of cool is that recently there was a sale on the PSN that discounted the prequel to this, which was Ground Zeroes, down to 5 bucks. So I'm hoping to get through that first, and then jump into this. So, whenever I make time, I'm looking forward to that. And then, and I know I know it's like keep saying that a lot, but it's true. Then next up is Killzone Shadowfall. I still am boggled by the fact that I haven't played this yet. I played all the other Killzone games on the PS3, but I still haven't managed to get to this. And this is one of the launch, I, I believe one of the launch titles for the PS4. Or at least it came out like two weeks within the PS4's uh, life. And it's still wrapped. And I still haven't played it. And it's a very quick playthrough. It's like seven or eight or nine hours. I'll remedy, I'll remedy that one of these days for sure. All right. This one, however, I did manage to get through rather quickly. Infamous Second Son. Not exactly my favorite Infamous game, to be completely honest, mainly because of its protagonist who's kind of a little generic. I didn't, I didn't hate him. I just thought that he was just kind of basic. But I liked that they were trying something new with the powers, something new with the tone and the environment. But... I kind of prefer the adventures of Cole McGrath within those first two games and how colorful all that stuff in that game was, or in those two games. Then, inducting me into the Fallout series was actually Fallout 4. I played this prior to Fallout 3, and I had a blast. I mean, I personally did not see any of the issues that an awful lot of other people had, but that was primarily because those were people who have been humongous fans of the series, and they thought that Fallout 4 kind of watered things down for them. Uh, however, for me... Fallout 4 was definitely one of the best games of that year. Don't really need to say any more than that because it's very recent. And the same goes for this next game that I absolutely adore, Uncharted 4 
A Thieves End. Steelbook Edition. This is actually one of my favorite steelbooks. I love the cover art. I mentioned this in my steelbook video where this is one of the reasons for why I dig steelbooks. Is to give creative artists a chance to really shine and show what they can really do with certain video game artwork. And that's always awesome. So, there you go. Next, oh, interesting that this is on the pile. Next up is the game that I'm actually current playing, currently playing as of the filming of this video, and that is Prey, the reboot by Bethesda and Arcane Studios, who are actually the guys in charge of the Dishonored series. So uh, that's what made me go, okay, I gotta check these guys out. Got it at a discount, and so far, really enjoying the game. I think it could have been a little bit better on the story side, but personally, I think that the game does a really good job at balancing the horror survival horror mechanics but at the same time giving you that beacon of hope that hey you can get stronger and you can kick some major ass later down the line if you play your cards right so i'm like okay cool so that's what i'm currently playing and this is actually not the game but this is just a steelbook case steelbook case of prey that came bundled with my purchase of course courtesy of best buy i know i suck their dick a lot but i'm sorry i love them but this is a cool, really, a really cool steel book that they provided. What's cool about it is that you see a cool image of your protagonist there, Morgan Yu, handling the powers while at the same time holding the little, uh, what is it called, the glue cannon. But then on, if you flip it, you actually have the female version of Morgan Yu. Fun fact, I'm actually playing as the female version of Morgan Yu. I just find that a little bit much more captivating. And so far, I think it's making the storyline just a little bit more enthralling than it originally would have been. So that's pretty nice. Oh, this next motherfucker. Um, I'm about to cause some controversy here, but the next game here on my collection is the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy that comes with the first three games. Fully remastered. It's not so much remastered as it is practically remade because you're dealing with brand new textures and stuff like that. What they unfortunately did not remake was the fucking physics. Because, oh my god, I just, I'm sorry guys, but I just don't think that Crash Bandicoot is for me. I played this game thinking that I was going to have oodles of fun, and I think it almost costed my relationship with my girlfriend, because <laughs> it was getting just that bad. I'm not even halfway through the first game. I'm not. I, there's this level that I just cannot get past, and I spent hours on it. It's doing the same shit over and over, so I just don't think that's going to happen, at least not anytime soon. Hopefully I can turn a negative into a positive and maybe film myself playing Crash Bandicoot and so that then my misery will become your guys' amusement. Next up is actually a surprise from the year and you might be seeing it on a video very very soon is For Honor. Really enjoyed this game. I was really surprised by the single player content. Unfortunately I haven't played the multiplayer but I was surprised and intrigued by both the premise and the gameplay that just had me going from beginning to end, so I'm, I definitely want to expand that more with the multiplayer. Alright, then it's the Elder Scrolls Online. I gotta be honest, I rented it one time, thought it was really cool, and then I saw it again on sale for like 10 bucks, so I was like, fuck it, I, I just gotta buy it. It's just an online multiplayer experience, but you get to do all the things that you normally get to do in Elder Scrolls. So I feel like, okay, you know what? This will probably hold me over until Elder Scrolls 6 comes out. Okay. Then it's Dying Light, another very ambitious project that I had an awful lot of fun with where you're parkouring through a city, zombies are trying to attack you from a first person perspective. Basically, it's a much more nuanced and sophisticated version of Dead Island. So I'm like, you know what? I recommend this. If you're ever into zombies and you want to kill zombies while at the same time exploring an open world that will probably have you being busy for hours, this is your game. And then next up is a game that I'm hoping to actually kind of jump into very, very soon because... I like these kind of things, and I love games that I'm able to just jump into for like 30 minutes, an hour, whatever, and just have fun. WWE 2K16, I understand we get a 2K game, whether it be for basketball, for wrestling, every fucking year. But there was something about 16 that had me surprised from its story mode, where you get to take your own character and put him through the ringer, or go through the classic uh, Steve Austin stuff, and I'm like, you know what, that, that's cool. Harkening back to the classic uh, Attitude Era with Stone Cold, I was like, you know what? This, this, this is the shit, alright? Digging it. Plus it was on sale. This is actually one of my treasured entries into the PS4 collection, but I haven't played it. <laughs> the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. I played Witcher 2 recently, actually, and I really, really enjoyed it. A couple of things here and there I think could have been refined, but I hear that Witcher 3 makes it even better. On top of that, it's on the PS4, and furthermore, 
comes with this nice looking sleeve. Whenever a game throws in that sleeve that you get to put over it, you got me, man. There's something about it that I just love. I love having this stuff. Just, uh. Then it's, and my pouch just fell over. Next up is Watch Dogs, and the disc is loose inside. Nice game, but could have been more than it originally was. I want some more to say about that. I'm just going to throw it here because my pile fell, so fuck it. South Park, the Fractured Butt Hole, one of the this year's entries, and definitely a game you're probably going to hear me talk about again very, very soon. But on top of that, takes what it built in South Park, uh, Stick of Truth, built upon it with the same kind of humor that you would expect from South Park, the similar animation that kind of fools you into thinking that you're playing in an episode, and then gameplay that wasn't just copy and paste from the first game, they actually kind of refined it, tuned it into something kind of different but also similar, so I'm like, you know what, I'm digging this. And so far, one of the fun experiences I've had gaming this year. Battlefield 1, don't exactly know why I purchased this. It was on sale, but not by that much. It's just that I was really, really intrigued by the whole vignette style to the story mode. That I'm like, you know what? I want to take my time with this and not have to rent it and be worried about returning it ASAP. So that's why it kind of snuck its way into my collection. Far Cry Primal, still wrapped, haven't played it. I still have yet to play Far Cry 4, but I'm excited for Far Cry Primal from... The notion that it's tackling something new, which is the caveman style approach to the whole thing. So I'm like, okay, this could be neat. There might be a little bit of a language barrier, but I'm still down to play it. <laughs> then comes a game that I gotta be honest is actually one of my needless purchases where I'm like, David, why do you why did you buy this? Because it was cheap and it's convenient for me to have it on the PS4. And that is the Uncharted Nathan Drake Collection. And if you guys have seen my PS3 Collection video, you know that I own all three Uncharted games on the PS3 individually, along with their multiplayer components. This only comes with the single player modes for all three of those games, but they're remastered, they're on the PS4, I could just jump from one to the other to the other conveniently, and like I said, I think it was like 10 or 15 bucks, so I was like... Shit. Resident Evil 4. I gotta be honest, I tried playing the first Resident Evil... I beat it, but I had an awful lot of frustrating moments, but I'm still like, you know what? I'm still willing to give the franchise a chance, should it ever be discounted. <laughs> or I get to make some savings along the way, and I think that getting Resident Evil 4 for 20 bucks, or in my case, 16 bucks, I was like, you know what? That's kind of a steal. This is one of the most uh, hailed games, not only for the Resident Evil franchise, but for gaming in general, so I'm like, all right. I guess it's time to dig in and see what it's all about with this one. So hopefully I'll do that very, very soon or within the foreseeable future. And then this game got an awful lot of flag for coming out around the same time that another very popular game with a similar play style came out. But you know what? I want to give them the chance. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt because ever so often I happen to be a contrarian. And that is Battleborn. Similar to Overwatch. That's the comparison that everybody else always makes. But coming from the guys who did um, uh, Borderlands, then taking that approach with their characters and then just kind of synchronizing it all, I was like, you know, I, I think I'll dig this. What I did not dig, however, was Evolve. I mainly dug their, their cover here as well as the, the way they housed the casing, which is, again, that fancy, fancy sleeve that I always like. But once I got into the minutia of the game itself, I was like, er, this isn't 100% great. It kind of tries to do what certain other asymmetrical multiplayer games do where one character is this big powerful thing and then the other characters are just regular humans trying to take it down all off Friday the 13th right now Evolve however wasn't as pristine and polished as well neither is Friday the 13th alright next up is actually a game that's going to be free uh, in January for the PlayStation Plus owners and that is Deus Ex Mankind Divided played Human Revolution, really enjoyed it Really liking what I saw from some of the marketing material and whatever of Mankind Divided. So hopefully I'll get to this very soon and I'll have fun with it. And then this is a game that I'm a little trepidatious about jumping into. But I'm like, you know, I think, it, I think I'll be able to dig into this franchise after being completely withdrawn from it for so long. And that is Final Fantasy XV. Managed to get, snag a bargain from it. But what's kind of got me intrigued is that... This is kind of set apart from the rest of the Final Fantasy games. And I'm like, you know what? I think it's time to see what the fuck is Final Fantasy all about. 
And to be honest, I'm looking forward to that Final Fantasy VII Remake because I'm willing to purchase that to see what all of the craze is behind Final Fantasy. Especially Final Fantasy VII because so many people love that one. And then we got, I, again, another purchase that I'm like, why did I make, why did I buy this? I, I don't get why I bought this, but Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens, I think it was the good reviews that was coming out for it. I made me go, you know what, I'm going to buy it. For 20 bucks, I'm going to buy it. And that's precisely what I did. And I think the disc is loose inside. People, what are you doing? Why are you giving me loose disc cases? Then comes another entry from this year, Shadow War. You guys already seen my review. If you have not, check it out on my channel. But you know that, let's just say I prefer Shadow of Mordor over this one. All right. Then we got Watch Dogs 2. Very different different protagonist and different uh, tackle to the story. So I'm like, all right, you got my attention. I'm liking what I'm seeing from some of the side quests and stuff that you could do around the city. So... Let's see what this is all about. And then Ratchet and Clank. Never been huge on Ratchet and Clank, but seeing they took the first game and kind of gave it the same treatment that they did with Crash Bandicoot, except they're throwing in guns. I think I'm a little bit more optimistic about this than I was with Crash. So there you go. Then <laughs> I'm lo I'm looking to anybody if they want to pay me five bucks to buy this off of me, the original Destiny. I, I honestly don't know. Why I have it again. They released so many versions of fucking Destiny with the Collector's Edition and the Taken King version and all that stuff. But yeah, the original Destiny. I don't know why that's in there. Mafia 3, one of my favorite artworks and packaging styles of all time because of that glossy rainbow colored lenticular finish. But besides that, it was a bargain that I managed to snag it with and I want to jump into the Ma uh, Mafia franchise. And 3 looked interesting to me. So there you go. Then... I got Doom, another game that I hear is an awful lot of from from fun from 2016, and well, not much more to say really about that except I haven't played it, but it looks very awesome. And to be honest, it's probably the only game that makes me go, you know what, that PSVR. I don't know, I'll think about it. Then a really underrated game that should not be underrated no more, and there's a bunch of dust flying off of it, probably because it's trying to give off the horror motif. Until Dawn. Until Dawn. Really enjoyed this game. Very underrated, like I said. Sure, not an awful lot of gameplay is actually happening, but there's really cool stuff happening within this horror game. Then, a game that, I gotta be honest, I kind of regret buying. Not because I bought it for the PS4, but actually, it's not because I bought it, but it's because I bought it for the PS4 when it's actually now available on the Switch, and it feels more like a Switch game, and that is Shovel Knight. Uh, it's cool that they went ahead and threw in the soundtrack as well as a cool little poster here, but I think I'd rather play this on the Switch because it's that type of game where I'm like, yes, I want to be able to play this at home or wherever I go. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll play it on the PS4 here at home and then the Switch version whenever I'm out. Then, again, another game that I bought, and I don't know why. Probably was because it was cheap, but I'm looking to get back into the NBA 2K games, so I guess we'll be doing it with NBA 2K17. Starring Paul George. I have no fucking clue who that is. I know, guys, this is a long video, but stick with me. Almost done. Tom Clancy's The Division heard a game that got better over time, so let's see if that stands the test of time. Then, uh, one of my favorite expansions of the year, but not one that, you know, kind of stood out when I think back to all the games that I played this year, but still pretty good. Dishonored, The Death of the Outsider expansion. Did a review of it, so be sure to check it out. But a good way to kind of wrap up the entire storyline, even though I think they should have made this into just full blown Dishonored 3, especially with that lead character. But that's my take. Then, a game that you already saw in my PS3 collection video, but for some. F well, I, I, this is the one purchase that I repurchased the game for the PS4, but I think it's kind of warranted, and that is GTA 5. And that's primarily because there's actually some cool little functions and mechanics that they put into the PS4 version that you can't find in the PS3 version. Most notably, the movie creator. I definitely want to be able to create little skits and movies and stuff like that within that uh, in the PS4 version of GTA V. So, hopefully, this year, this coming year, you will see some of those from me on my channel. We'll have to wait and see. Then, probably my favorite expansion of the year because of how polished and brand new it felt, while at the same time being part of this legacy, Lost Legacy, Uncharted the Lost Legacy. Then, in my opinion, one of the most underrated games of recent memory from, I think, 2015, was Mad Max. 
definitely should not be sleeping on this game if you haven't already played it because it's an awful lot of fun and even if it wasn't game of the year material it's still an awful lot of fun i can't recommend it enough then is the version of destiny that i did play destiny the taken king this is the one that i actually did play with all the expansions as well as the taken king storyline and that was the number one surefire way to play destiny so i was like okay glad i got with that one don't know why I bought the original Destiny, but it's in there. Then, oh my god, love this game. Injustice 2, did a review, you can check it out on my channel now, but definitely subverting expectations where it comes to a sequel where you're like, eh, I don't know if they're going to be able to really be even better than the first Injustice. Oh, they got better. They got better. Holy shit. An awful lot of fun and addictive game to play. Then I guess I'll do these two because it's just the normal case in a steelbook but that is mass effect andromeda yes i have the game honestly a rather good game it's not great it's not per it's far from perfect and it definitely has its issues but i don't think you should necessarily hear I, I think some of the hatred for this game is somewhat hyperbolic and i think it's fueled by people's hatred ha true and genuine hatred for ea which i'm not exactly contesting and then we got one of my favorite games of the year. Which one? It, it, where does it rank? You'll have to wait and see. But holy shit. Is this a brand new IP that I'm looking forward to seeing the sequel. And maybe even jumping into some of the recent DLC. Horizon Zero Dawn. A game that came out so early in the year. In the year and managed to stick in my brain. All throughout the year. Down to the very end. So pretty cool. Did a review for it. So you can check that out. Then another nifty little surprise. That I managed to add to my collection. Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series. Granted, I could have done this digitally, but I went ahead with the disc because it was cheap. And I played all five episodes. Really, really good. A couple of episodes here and there. I think there was like two episodes total where I was like, eh, this didn't shine as the other three. But it was the other three as well as they, the way that they handled the characters that really redeemed us. So, pretty cool. Of course, I feel like at this point, everybody needs to have an obligatory copy of this Overwatch for the PS4. Not much more that I can say about that, right? Because I think at this point, if you have wanted to play it, you would have played it. Then comes another game that I was not expecting to buy, but I managed to do it anyway. And I was like, you know what? I'm glad I did. Tales of Berseria. Jumping into the Tales bandwagon of the Tales games, like Tales of Hysteria, Zilla, whatever. And this is the, the inducting game for me into that franchise. Saying, you know what? I think it did a good job doing that. So, who knows? Maybe I'll be jumping into some more Tales games? We'll have to wait and see. Then another recent purchase that I still haven't played yet, and I think it's going to be a while before I jump into it, but we'll see. Destiny 2. Mainly bought it because I got it super cheap. And of course, it's all thanks to Best Buy. 18 bucks. How about it? All right. And then let me see. I think that's actually about it. Nope, nope. I'm lying. Got some more here. <laughs> the Steelbook Edition of Yakuza Kiwami. Wasn't exactly planning on getting it, but then it got cheaper and cheaper as the holidays started to wind down. And again, you know how much of a sucker I am for Steelbooks. So uh, looking pretty cool there. And hopefully I can figure out what exactly transpires within the Yakuza franchise that makes me go, all right, you know what? I'm going to check that out, especially since I think I own Yakuza 4. I got it for free from PlayStation Plus, but I still haven't played it. So I'm like, hmm, let's go back to where it all started and then we'll do 4. To kind of give it some context, if you will. And then, it's just, my shit's just falling here. Alright, uh, next is a game that I tried. I tried super hard to play before the year wrapping up. But I don't think I'm going to be able to play it. It's just, I just ran out of time. Nier Automata. I hear it's one of the best of the year. So, that, got, that has me definitely excited. A uh, game that I would love to have played this year. But I still have yet to play the first game. At least part of the revamped series of games. Wolfenstein 2. I've seen some gameplay of it that looks tremendously fun, but I'm going to have to wait on it just a little bit. And then lastly, the game that for sure needs to wait because of how fucking long it is. It's probably the longest game on record of this year, and that is Persona 5. Because I had to make a choice. It was either Persona 5 or at least a handful of other games to play in the last month of the, you know, of the year, December, to try to be make part of my Game of the Year contenders. So I had to sacrifice Persona 5 for those other games. I had to choose quantity over longevity here, I guess. But that does not mean that sometime this year I will finally sit down and play this game. Probably not all of it, but 
Hopefully most of it. And let me confirm it here. Yep. That is it for my PlayStation 4 collection video. At least, again, physical game discs that I have for the system. There's probably an awful lot of other games that I have digitally. And again, considering that the PS4 is still within circulation, we're def I'm definitely going to be adding a shit ton of other games this coming year of 2018. So hopefully this time in 2018, you will see yet another update video on my PlayStation 4 collection with everything that I added from the games that you're probably going to see me review to some of the games that I managed to just go to the store and buy because I was like, you know what? This is on sale. This looks interesting. Buying it. And you'll see what it's all about then. Between now and then, however, feel free to let me know what you guys have in your PlayStation 4 collection in the comments below. Make sure you like and share this video. And as it stands, this is going to be it for 2017. It was a good year. I saw an influx in subscribers. Thank you guys so much for the support, for the likes, for the comments. I'm loving having interactions with all of you guys, uh, especially when it comes to talking about some really geeking, nerdy stuff. And I'm hoping you guys enjoy this video as long as it was. And I'm hoping also that this coming month of January, there's going to be an awful lot of cool reviews, videos, plenty of other content hopefully coming in your guys direction i have a list of things that i want to kind of get through and hopefully you guys will like it i know i'm hoping an awful lot for here but it's the one thing that i'm kind of holding on to here it's hoping 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 and hoping that things go smoothly here on the dark spider david channel so thank you guys so much for watching again show your guys support for the video by hitting the like and share subscribe to see those videos coming in january and also be sure to follow me on twitter and on instagram you'll see my handles there at the very end of the video. Until next year, guys. See you all later. Especially when you get the majority of your minority characters and put them on a side quest mission that was, in my opinion, just a little preachy. When you got Finn, uh, this girl Rose, who happens to be an Asian woman, and then another character who also happens to be a minority. I thought that was just the butt of a joke. And I was like, oh, does nobody else see this? 